Hey everyone, got another explainer video here for you on some of the free clinician resources you can find on the Pain and Quality of Life Integrated Research Lab website at pearlresearch.com. I've navigated there now and I've clicked on clinician resources across the top. Here you're going to see a growing list of free resources that you're welcome to use in your own clinical practice. Today we're going to talk about the Brief Illness Perceptions Questionnaire, a revised version that's available for you on the website. By tapping on that, it'll take you to the stop, uh, space in the page where that tool is described. The BIPQ has become one of my favorite sort of go-to tools that I use in clinical practice and when I work with patients. I also use it in a lot of research as well, and we've had a chance to do a fair bit of work on it, and I quite like the tool. It's based around Leventhal's common sense illness of uh, common sense model, sorry, of illness representations. And it uh, is intended to capture a, a number of different perceptions a way around the way that your patients make sense of their injury or illness. By first clicking on the top title link, uh, you will open up the tool itself, and I've got it open here. This is free for you to download, and it's uh, print off in PDF format. What you can see here is that there are 10 0 to 10 scales. With an 11th item, which is an open-ended question asking people to describe the top three most important causes of their symptoms, and I'll get to that more in just a moment. If you go here, you're going to see uh, some of the different items, so starting with to what degree has your injury had a negative effect on your life, how long do you think your symptoms will continue, how much control do you feel you have over your symptoms, and so on and so forth. One thing that some who are familiar with the original Brief Illness Perceptions Questionnaire, which was published by Broadbent and colleagues back in 2006, there was a nine item version, this one's 10. The reason that it's 10 is that we've taken and split up item five into two different items. The original one had response options going from no symptoms at all to many severe symptoms. And of course that conflates the number of different symptoms with the severity of those symptoms. So split them up. So now we've got one asking about the number of different symptoms and then one asking about how severe they are. And of course these are very familiar numeric rating scales. I'm sure we have seen those things many many times in our practice. The tool itself is not meant to be summed. Uh, rather you're meant to interpret each individual item on its own. I can show you how to do that near the end of the video using a radar plot. If you're interested you can take a look at some of the different papers that we've done uh, looking at this tool. One of them uh, we, said we did was looking at the use of this tool to identify different classes of people with neck pain. In this case, we didn't actually need all 10 of those items. In fact, we only needed uh, six or seven of them to, to classify the patients, but all 10 of the items are still useful. I mentioned the final item, which was a question asking about the three most important causes of, of symptoms. We also explored that using a sort of mixed methods approach. We published that back in 2012. And among other things, one of the things we found was that those who identify a traumatic cause of their neck pain tend to be a bit worse off when we look at their scores on other tools than do those who identify a non-traumatic cause. I also find this quite interesting to open up some dialogue. Uh, there's a number of people who might identify an emotional or a stress type of trigger for their neck pain. This is a great way to have some conversation around that. In fact, you could argue that many of these things here, taking a look at things like uh, emotional impact, sense of fragility, how well they feel they understand their symptoms, all of these things are really great conversation starters, which is one of the reasons I quite like this tool. And it's fairly benign. It's not in your face. It's not quite as, um, as negatively worded as some of the other uh, cognitive tools that are available. Going back to the website here, uh, a couple things that you can see that we've also done for you and we've, uh, we've given you access to. One is a Google uh, Drive, a Google Drive spreadsheet for interpreting this tool. I'm going to show you that now. By clicking on that, you're going to open up a, uh, a Google Drive sheet that you can access. And here, as I mentioned, we don't need all the items from the uh, tool to be able to classify people, in this case, with neck pain. But we do need about seven of them. And what I've done here for you is, let's imagine we just put some uh, some numbers in here, okay? What you can see is happening is that we've created a radar plot that's uh, generating itself as we enter scores. Uh, I quite like a radar plot. Some of you who have heard me talk before know that. The first thing this has done is sort of behind the scenes here, in fact, you can see the formula up here, this is a result of a regression-based analysis, is it has estimated the class of distress that your patient is most likely in. We identified three different classes, and this is again for people with neck pain uh, being either low distress, moderate, or high. So based on the scores here, 
this person gets placed into that moderate distress category. What that would mean is if you were to then give them other scales, such as a pain catastrophizing scale, a fear avoidance beliefs questionnaire, um, maybe a Tampa scale for kinesiophobia, an NDI, that sort of thing, they would all score sort of in that moderate range. But the nice thing about this, and this is where I, again, I like the scale, is that by plotting these results on a radar plot, you can sort of see here immediately where some of the areas are domains that you may want to explore a little bit further. In this case, you may ask the patient, I see that you've indicated you're experiencing several different types of symptoms, so clearly not just pain. What can you tell me about that? And you might get information around stiffness, numbness, weakness, difficulties concentrating, sleeping, those sorts of things. And again, that opens up conversation. The uh, Going back to the website one more time, we also do have an Android-based smartphone app. For those of you who have Android phones, you can just tap directly on that. And it'll download a little APK file right to your phone. You can install it from there. You're going to have to enable installation of third-party or external sources, uh, but I would caution you just to make sure you only do so for this installation and then shut that service off. Otherwise, it leaves your phone vulnerable to malicious attacks. For those who don't have an Android-based smartphone, you can also use the BlueStacks Android emulator on Windows from bluestacks.com. And I'm going to show you what that looks like in just a moment. And here we are. We've got the BlueStacks Android emulator open now on, on Windows. And I've gone to the My Apps section of that. And the first thing I would do is go and click this Install APK down the lower right-hand corner. I would navigate to the downloaded file that I just pulled off of the lab website. And that will install for you onto your, uh, onto your system. I've already done that. Uh, as I mentioned, these are all sort of bare bones. These have been, in fact generated for many years that are about three or four years old at least by now uh, I do not uh, support these anymore just to be clear we are working on better versions of them so for now these are all free feel free to do whatever you wish with them um, it's entirely possible you'll find some bugs as well so just be prepared for that however if I tap on it uh, it will open up a an application oh I see first of all I get an ad we'll shut that down here we go okay and so if I just click tap here to begin, what I'm going to do is, first of all, it's going to ask me what types of, uh, what areas do I have uh, pain? So let's imagine I've got, we'll call it head or neck pain. Okay. Let's even say lower back pain for the sake of this demonstration. I'm actually not entirely sure what it's going to do. It's been so many years since I've used this. From there, then, I'm going to be presented with the different questions that I need to answer specifically to determine what level of distress, what classification, what class of neck pain um, this person falls in. So we're going to start with, to what degree has your injury had a negative effect on your life? Zero is no effect at all. Ten is severely affects my life. I can tap here. I'll be presented with the number zero to ten. I'll choose one. It shows me there are three. If I don't like that, I can tap on it again and go back and change it. And as I go through, I'm going to do the same thing. How long, do you, uh, how long do you think the effects of your injury will last? A very short time to forever. Let's give them a six on this one. How severe are the symptoms you're experiencing? From not at all to extremely severe. Uh, we'll give them a nine on that one. How concerned are you about your injury? Well, we'll give it a, let's say, a one. Uh, obviously, that would be not entirely logical, but that's all right for demonstration. How easy do you feel it would be to injure yourself further? This is asking about sense of fragility. Let's give them a high on this one. We'll give it an eight. And finally, how much has your injury affected you emotionally? That is, it doesn't make you feel angry, scared, upset, or depressed. Uh, let's say there's not a strong emotional component to this. We'll give it, oh, sorry, a two. That gives then the opportunity for the patient to, uh, to review their scores. So effect on your life is a two, expected duration six, intensity nine, so on and so forth. If they want to change any of these, they can just click on the button. It'll take them right back to that question, and then they can go all the way through again. Once they're happy, they're going to tap Submit. Uh, this was the idea here initially when I developed this, was that then the patient would turn this back to the, uh, the clinician, you. And you could tap here to get a little bit of interpretation. The interpretation here, very similar to what you just saw in the Google Drive, is uh, in this case, rather than a radar plot, it's more of a bar plot. The, uh, the difference here is that I've also colored these. So basically anything there where a score of seven or higher is shown, we suggest those are areas you're going to want to explore further. So in this case, the person scored nine on symptom intensity. You're going to want to explore that. That should be a key uh, component of your subsequent analysis and evaluation of the patient, as well as sense of fragility. For whatever reason, this person feels as though they could be injured quite easily. You might want to explore that further. The, uh, the mid-range ones are going to be colored yellow. So expected duration here, again, you may want to ask more about how long do you think this is going to last? Why do you think it's going to last that long? 
and you may get some really interesting um, information about their background and maybe previous experiences they've had with a similar type of injury or perhaps experiences that they've seen other people have with that and you can explore some of those perceptions but then it seems as though we can safely ignore things like effect on life how concerned they are and the emotional impact of the uh, of their experience which is great um, we've also got a calculated uh, classification here which is in this case low distress overall um, so uh, that also is nice and then finally, and now this part is not complete, I know that much, but if I tap on this additional information button, it suggests that uh, I might be wanting to explore a few other tools here. For in this case, we've got high pain intensity. We might, the app suggests you might consider a numeric rating scale and perhaps a body diagram at minimum. There is a body diagram you can pull off the lab's website. You might consider the short form McGill pain questionnaire or even the Leeds assessment of neuropathic signs and symptoms if you think there might be a neuropathic component. They've also got a strong sense of fragility here, so you could imagine further exploration with something like a Tampa scale for kinesiophobia or fear avoidance beliefs questionnaire. Finally, what region-specific disability skills should I use? This one I'm quite confident is not going to fully work. Oh, I'm wrong. Look at that. It did work. It's just a little bit uh, formatted incorrectly. Um, so for head or neck, yeah, you might consider something like a neck disability index or a headache impact test 6. For the lower back, you might consider a Roland Morris disability questionnaire if you wanted to evaluate uh, region-specific disability. So I, I don't think that's going to work for every body region. I'm fairly confident I didn't actually complete the uh, programming, but the app is at least functional. You're welcome to use it if you wish. Again, just with the caveats, just recognize there may well be bugs in here. Um, I make no guarantees about the compatibility of this with your particular device, so just uh, use it at your own risk. Anyway, that's the brief illness perceptions questionnaire. Uh, whether you like to use the app or not, uh, I do encourage you to consider the use of the tool itself. It really does open up some nice dialogue with your patients. All for now.